Hello everyone and welcome to part 2 of our robot tutorial series here on unitycookie.com. My name is Patrick Bullens and in the second part we are going to be creating the visual aspect of our first NPC character which is going to be a holobot. Now a holobot is basically going to be the same as our player character here except it's going to have the appearance of a broken hologram of sorts with some flickering going on and also a particle effect. And so I want to go ahead and get started with the particle effect. And for that I'm going to be creating a new game object, which is going to be an empty, and use that as the basis. And the reason I'm not just duplicating a robot here is because it's using a skinned mesh renderer. And that's causing some troubles with the origins for the particle effects. So first thing I want to do is go to component and mesh. And I want to assign a mesh filter and a mesh renderer. And then for the mesh, I'm just going to click here and set it to be the robot head. Let's move it up a little bit. And so, um, oops, there we go. You can see that the materials uh, haven't been assigned yet, which is a good thing because I want to create a new one. So with my materials folder selected, I'm going to go to, let's do it here, create material. And let's name this holobot underscore green. And I'm just underscore greening it because I could imagine having multiple color variations of it. So I want to set the shader type here from the views to be particles additive. And the reason for that is because it gives it sort of a nice translucent feel where you can still have the color controlled here as well. So I'm going to set this to the green I want, I think. So it's still looking quite awful right now, and the way to fix that is to also assign a texture. So here we have our robot diffuse, and that's already looking more hologramish. Um, I'm going to leave it at this for now. Move it up just a bit. All right. I want to first do the head with the particle systems, and then I can just duplicate it, move it down, and assign the body. So, actually, let me see, because I think that it may be rotated right now, the head. And... is it? I'm not entirely sure. Um, which is probably a good thing, because it means that you can't really tell it's a robot's head. Um, I do think it is rotated. So it's, so it, yes, it was, because I can now see the eyes here. All right. Um, I want to go ahead and attach the particle components. And the ones we're going to be using is a mesh particle emitter, a particle animator to fade the particles in and out, and also a particle renderer. Now, if you are on the newly released Unity beta for 3.5, then you're going to need to have to go to particles, legacy, and then assign these three components here. And the reason I'm using this old um, in quotation marks, this old particle system, is because I think it really fits what we want to do here. Um, just gives us a bit more options, I think. So I'm going to add the mesh particle emitter, the particle animator, and lastly, the particle renderer. And already we can see we have these pink boxes being spawned all around the head, which is good. So let's first set the material. To be all about green, and that's looking nice already, though not quite holographic yet. I'm going to be leaving the animator as is because it's just fading in and out. As you can see here by the alpha values, here we have an alpha of 10. Then in the next slot, we have an alpha of 180, moving up to the full 255, and then back down. So let's go here to our particle animator and change a few of these settings. Now the min and max sizes are just the sizes for the particles. So to give them a bit of variation, I'm going to say 0.1 and 0.2. Not too much, but just enough to keep it interesting. Next up, the energy is controlling how long a particle should be allowed to live in seconds. So to give it that sort of broken flickering effect, I'm going to use very low values. And actually I'm just going to set both to 0.1 for now. You can see that we now have this one particle being spawned all over the place. 
um, which is nice, though not exactly how we want it. We want all of the particles constantly showing. So the way to fix that is to check one shot right here. So this will spawn all of the particles in bursts. All right, sweet. So all I'm going to change now is the emission values, which is how many particles should be spawned every burst or at once. And I'm going to limit them to between 100 and 120. So if I move around right now with playing, that's actually not looking too bad. That's looking sort of holographic, I think, even though only the particles are flickering right now and not a solid piece just yet. So this part. But we'll get to that in just a second. First, let's rename this to Holobot Head. Well, let's try hollow bot and not hollow boot. All right, duplicate this, name this body, move this down a bit. Now all we need to do is set the mesh to be the robot body. And, oh, this one automatically changes, awesome. So let's move the body down a bit more so it's where it's supposed to be. Set the file. And there we have it. So that's already looking pretty cool, I think. So all I want to do now is make the solid parts um, flicker as well. And for that, we're going to be creating a script. So um, with this scripts folder selected, which I actually didn't make in my previous uh, tutorial, I just made it prior to this and drag my player script into this. But anyway, I'm going to go to create JavaScript and let's call this flickering script. And so I don't want to name this something like hologram script or anything because I could very well see a scenario where I also want to use this for uh, maybe lantern posts or Christmas lights or something like that. So I'm going to hit open here. All right, and we're not going to be using the update function at all. Instead what we're going to be doing is at the start we are going to get the current value of this material which is going to be that green and select it here. What we're then going to be doing is generating a random alpha value between, well, probably between zero and around the 100 mark or something at random intervals, and then assign that value to the alpha component of this color. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to say for color of type color with a capital C, and then no assigning. Then I'm going to be creating my start function. So this is only going to be run once at the start of the game. And so I'm going to say color equals renderer dot material dot get color. Oops, material, not material. And so the get color function actually expects, uh, let me show you, no, it's not auto-completing. Oh, I already know why, it's renderer, not render. Sorry about that. Done. Get color, there we go, and you can see it expects property name as string. And so how do we know this name? Well, we know that this here is called a tint color, and the way Unity names these values is this name without spaces and all preceded by an underscore. So we need to say underscore tint color. Next to make sure that this uh, works, let's say debug.log color. Save this and wait for it to compile, play the game. Oh, and we're not going to be getting anything yet because we haven't attached a script to anything. So let's do that to both the head and the body here, All right? And you can see that we're getting twice now, one for the head and one for the body, and there are RGBA values of 0, 0.515 and 0 0.016, and here we have the alpha value, all right? So next we want to have the random interval part, so I'm going to be saying function um, wait for color, 
which is just going to be yielding the script for a little while. So yield. Oh, and then wait for seconds. And let's wait for a random amount. So let's say random that range. And let's wait between 0.0, .0 seconds and 0 0.1. Then after that, let's uh, set the color. So we need to say function set color. And in there, we are going to be saying color dot a equals. Oh, actually, um, we're also going to be using that. We're going to be saying um, yeah, we should say this color dot a. So we're going to be setting the alpha value or the alpha component of our color equals and also a random range except this goes from uh, 0 to 1 and so I don't want it at 1 I want it at about 0.4 or 0.5 maximum so let's try 0.45 okay and then in set color um, all I want to do here is say renderer dot material dot set color and I want to set the underscore tint color to be our new color our color variable and the reason I set this in a separate function and not just here is because I now want to call back to the wait for color function and so this way we have sort of this loop going on where it's going to, going to wait set the color dot alpha and then so, or actually probably it would be even better if we could set that in the set color so we really have it separated so now this is really just awaiting and then getting called back to here now there's only one thing we need to start wait for color uh, in start here so that the loop is started and that's all there's to it so if we play our game you can see both the robot and the particles flickering so it really appears sort of broken and not quite working as well as it used to be and that's really all there is to it. So in our next part, we are going to be making the NPC a bit more interactive, where if we were to get near him, he would start talking. So you'd have to get through the text and maybe get an objective or something. So that's it for now. Thank you all very much for watching.